Hey, I'm Jeff. And I'm Phil, and we're the Cocktail Dudes. Today we're making the Bronx. Classic cocktail from around 1900, created by Johnny Salon in New York. We have a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. We like to think so. You have a lot of friends. I like to think so. I've got you, so that makes one. <laughs> Sometimes Jackie, she's in a good mood. But no one ever says the Bronx is their favorite cocktail. I don't know anybody that says that, do you? Amongst all your mm-hmm. posse? Most of my posse wouldn't know what a Bronx is. In 1934, <laughs> um, the Bronx was the number three cocktail in the world, according to some survey, right behind Martini and Manhattan. And we were never really big fans of the Bronx, and this is a cocktail that we tinkered with a lot. Mm-hmm. Trying bitters, trying different proportions, everything different. And we kind of finally came to the realization that it was darn good on its own. Mm-hmm. We were just trying to make it better, but... After tasting it time and time again when trying to recreate it or make it different, we kind of fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. All right? It's one of the first cocktails to use orange juice. And um, old Johnny named it the Bronx because he had been to the Bronx Zoo. And, of course, back in 1900, they had exotic animals there that we'd never seen before. You know, you forget how exotic an elephant was and a tiger was. Right. Because we can see them every day on TV. Mm -hmm. But So he named it. He was a bartender. He named it the Bronx because... A lot of his best customers would start hallucinating and seeing crazy animals <laughs> like they had at the Bronx Zoo the longer they sat at his bar. You know, you ever hear that song from Credence, Out the Back Door? Maybe if you could hum a few bars. I know a lot of songs from Credence, but I don't know, I don't know any of the words. Jackie always is playing them, like, you know, on our road trips, she puts Credence in a lot. And it's, they're catchy, but I don't know any of the words. Well, I won't sing it, but I'll explain it. It, it's a song, he comes home, he's relaxing, he's looking out the back door, and he sees all these happy creatures dancing on the lawn, giants oh, doing that song. cartwheels, and statues wearing high heels, stuff like that. Are those, he must, the, are those the words, really? Yeah. He must have been relaxing, drinking a Bronx, because he started seeing all these crazy animals out his back door. I don't know these guys from Credence personally, but I think they, they were probably smoking something rather than drinking something. Either way. Out the back door. I know yeah. that song. Yeah. Out the back door. Those were the only words to that song that I know. <laughs> I had no idea there was elephants in high heels. Now he was I know. seeing all sorts of stuff in his backyard. But he could have been drinking this. He could have been drinking the Bronx. Yeah. All right, let's make it. You start with uh, one shot of gin, which is one and a half ounces. And we prefer uh, the Plymouth gin in this drink. And then you're going to have... Thank you. Shaking it? Yep, we're going to shake it. Yep. So we have your gin, you've got sweet vermouth, dry vermouth, and orange juice. All right, so we're gonna do uh, one half ounce each of the sweet vermouth. Maybe, there you go. One half ounce, that's what you say I know. See, I'm... when I think uh, one and a half ounce. So it's a half an ounce, yeah, right? A half ounce. A half ounce. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna always say one half ounce. Two that's just, ounce. I gotta be me. <laughs> No, now I know. You were wondering how I get confused. I that's it. Yeah. That's it. So we're gonna do. I can't say a half a, a half an ounce because that's hard mumbling as I do. <laughs> well, one half ounce. Point five ounces. We could start talking in tablespoons, but then I would get tablespoon and teaspoon mixed up. Right. Sort of like I do lime and lemon. Um, one ounce of orange juice. I'm surprised this is one of the first cocktails with orange juice in it because I would think it would be like a screwdriver because that's simple. It's orange juice and vodka. Screwdrivers uh, became popular right after World War II. What's that? <laughs> Do you remember our... Um, I'm going to blank on it now. Our What's our ginger beer drink? In the I'm copper blanket. I'm blanking. Oh, the... Um, it's something... Moscow Mule. Yeah, right. Mule. Obviously. It was that same guy, John Martin, who went around making the Moscow Mule, who said, hey, you can use this vodka with orange juice, too. Oh, yeah, so that yeah. was sort of after World War II, really, that, that became popular. So this is, we're still back at the turn of the century here. One thing we have learned when we tried all these different versions, I know, I'm talking to I was going to make sure you were going to bring this up. because this talking is to my fans. The, <laughs> this is one of the keys to the drink right here. Yeah, is hand squeeze your orange juice. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could use it from a jar from the refrigerator, obviously. But if you, we would like crank it out with this thing. And this drink seems to be very sensitive to the bitterness from the rind. So that's one thing we learned. 
among many others, I suppose. And um, we tried various gins too, and that's why we like the Plymouth best. So you want just the juice and go easy on the squeezing. All right, there's one ounce of orange juice. Excellent. We're gonna add ice, shake this puppy up. And then strain it into an old fashioned glass. And then just a little orange twist there, set that on the top, and there you have your Bronx. Cheers. Cheers.